outcome-based curriculum, why are we moving to do what Professor Magua is doing? What Professor Magua is doing is toying with the curriculum reform. Malaysia has reverted to outcome-based curriculum after a brief rollout of competency-based curriculum. And all those proponents who are condemning the outcome-based curriculum, basic education is basic, mzingi, elimum zingi. You are being given knowledge, and knowledge to prepare you for post-basic training. And that explains why Kenyan students have done very well everywhere, in the Ivy League universities, and nowhere in the world do you get an active media like the one you have in Kenya, because you are equipped with the necessary knowledge. And that's why the summative evaluation was necessary to inform professionally. It is not something that is done political and impulsive. And I wish to say at this point, there is no more professionalism in CBC. There is 100% and above politics in CBC. And that is how this country will be killed. And that's how public education will be killed. According to established norms for CBC to succeed, one, the development and implementation of CBC must secure full stakeholders' involvement and participation as a constitutional requirement. This must go beyond teachers. Everyone must participate. Particularly when you're talking about CBC where parents are involved. Are parents prepared? Do they even understand the concept of CBC? And are they ready? to supervise and assess even learners at home. Do they have that capacity? When we are talking about a nation where poverty index is at alarming percentages, the parents of this country are fighting with poverty, food and clothing. They have no time to engage in such a pedagogy. Two, all public schools must have adequate infrastructure to accommodate increased number of learners to deliver CBC. And I'm asking Professor Magoa, do we have the right infrastructure in terms of classrooms, in terms of uh, furniture, in terms of teaching materials? Because a teacher is expected to prepare a file for every learner in every lesson. How would you do that in a congested classroom of 70 learners? It is completely impossible. Three, implementers who are teachers of CBC must be trained adequately on the new curriculum and training from the pre-service. CBC cannot work when you utilize teachers who are in service to change their pedagogy to CBC. In fact, what, is, what we have here is not change of education system. You people of the media. It is change of teaching. Because we are changing from uh, uh, outcome-based pedagogy method to competent-based pedagogy method. You need time to train teachers at the pre-service course be before rollout. So that we have proposed that the rollout can be from 2023-2024 in another document which I'm not, uh, I have not attached here. So that there is enough time to change the teacher training curriculum and train teachers with competency-based uh, pedagogy skills to roll out the curriculum. What is happening now is punishing the teachers who are in service who cannot interpret the design and who even have been trained by trainers who are innocent. They don't understand. Who are tapila rasa, blank. They cannot understand the CBC. How do you have a trainer who doesn't understand the CBC training teachers in the classroom? It's a paradox. And uh, you men and women of the media walk to the classroom everywhere in Kenya and beam what is happening you will believe what we are talking about. Precisely, presently, trainers of trainers, trainers of the trainers, TOT, lack the prerequisite skills and competencies to interpret and implement CBC design. Four, there must be standard assessment procedure of learners. And currently, the Ministry of Education, TSC, KICD, NEC, and Kenya Institute of Education have all failed to agree on an assessment procedure. There is no agreement on an assessment procedure. Absolutely. And would like Kenyans to be convinced about an assessment procedure. When we talk simplistically of continuous assessment tests, and those tests 
are not there, then we wonder how this will be done. Five, implementation of CBC requires small class sizes as per UNESCO recommendation. For personalized teaching, which means more classrooms, more libraries, more workshops, computer rooms, and more schools have to be constructed. Most public schools in Kenya lack basic infrastructure. And we want to thank some of the sections of the media who have highlighted even schools that do not have classrooms. Classrooms being undertaken under trees or teaching being undertaken in dilapidated classrooms which are flooded, we've seen in coast. These are realities of Kenya. And uh, these ivory tower policymakers who don't know the state of infrastructure of schools are theorizing and forcing something that will not work. There will be no fairness to the disadvantaged children even in asal areas and uh, in public schools. Six, at least three teachers per class are required, which Kenya cannot afford presently. The country faces an acute shortage of teachers. Seven, teaching tools and infrastructure needed for implementation of CBC are far above what the country has provided to schools. There is no evidence of government's commitment to avail these resources. And Professor Laban Airo's report, which was adopted by the government through the National Steering Committee on 19th of December at KICD, put the conserv conservatory estimate of 365 billion as money required to roll out from pre-primary one to grade three. The question is, the nation has not discussed the economics of CBC. The government has not committed that it shall avail 365 billion to install infrastructure and avail learning resources. What we have seen in the budget is only two billion for computers and CBC. That will do nothing at all. Uh, and then eight, inadequate learning facilities, poor infrastructure development and lack of trained teachers for CBC in public schools is only advantageous to private schools, which are now doing lucrative business at the expense of public schools. We are almost convinced and we are yet to carry out a detailed study. Somebody might want to destroy public schools to promote chains of private schools for purposes of business. Where is Olympic primary schools at Kibera that used to top in exams? It was destroyed by promotion of private schools. The 100% transition is not a generous offer from government. It is meant to destroy the best secondary schools in the country. And eventually, you compel the country to shift to private education. We see very far, the devil is in the detail. There will be no equity. And we are not going to support, let it be known, we are not going to support a process that is going to kill public education. Because the child of Wanjiku is in a public school and must be protected.